Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about um, you know model first design in ASP.NET MVC 5 and using NTT framework and how to first create a bunch of models you know and after that do the migration so that we create a database table for you and of course you know the by default whatever the table name column type whatever it creates and then if, you, if we don't like it we can modify it so that's what I'm going to talk about so what I have done basically here is I have a b very basic ASP.NET MVC application. It's a bug management system basically, you know, a bug management system that any 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 team can use to report the bug, either by the QA or maybe developer or maybe you know business analyst or whoever. Okay, let's just briefly look at into some of the domain model that I have, domain object. Of course, the biggest one is the issue. Um, I have some properties like, you know, of course I need to know the ID, the primary key of the table, for example, this is the ID. That's how I will be uniquely identifying the issue, the issue type, which is just the enumeration that might be, um, you know, whether it's a bug, a task, or improvement, or whatever it is. And the priority, uh, the, the priority could be, you know, critical, major, minor, or trivial, whatever company wants to have. And of course, you know, all the affected person this this bug has, an issue person means which person it was fixed by the developer, and which project this issue is associated with the bug environment. Most of these are all enumeration data type, okay? And then the category, all the different kind of category this belongs to, and then the actual description that you put that you can enter for this uh, issue. And a user can have can add a multiple comment to this issue that's why I have a list of issue comment and they can attach multiple uh, the document you know and I want to add some additional property let's go ahead and public uh, date time I don't know when it was created created date okay and uh, of course, I want to know uh, the user that I created the bug created by. Okay, I have a property called, well, I have object called user, so I want to know who created it. Okay, this is my main object issue, and then of course, I have a attachment here. Just for now, I don't have anything. My end goal is to have um, store any PDF or document or. or uh, Spreadsheet, whatever, as a as a binary data into a SQL database, and this is the comments, okay. And here's the person of what person it is, like ID of the person, and which project this is associated with, or, and then and the environment, like which environment this is associated with, the like with a dev or test QA or training or whatever. This is my basic domain, okay. So my idea is to is to um, once I have my model defined. Now, of course, you know my model is not complete. This is partially, let's say, you know, maybe ten percent complete. But I want to see how my data looks like. That's what I'm going to do next. Well, first I'm going to do um, code first migration, right? So basically, um, I'm writing this code in Visual Studio 2013. So I'm going to go into web configuration file. Uh, by default, inside this connection string element Visual Studio, they basically use this default connection string, which is local DB. But instead of using this local DB, I would like I have my SQL Server in the back, and I would like to it to create a database in my you know the the schema database schema in my SQL Server database. Let's go ahead and. Uh, name this project as a bug management and just to be sure you know the I don't have a these are at least my databases but I don't have a database called project management as you can see right here there's no project called there's no database called project management okay so now make sure my um, I can build this okay let's go ahead and build it and after that, now I'm ready to do a you know issue some command to push these model changes into into the backend database. Go, go into tools, 
and let's go ahead into uh, library package manager package manager console I'm gonna clear some of the command that was that I was playing with it before so very first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna say um, enable migration okay this is telling me hey I cannot let me see if I can make it a little bigger um, 150 okay I cannot do enable migration because it looks like you have a 2db context well even before that you know um, I, I forgot to show you I have my bulk management db context for so basically what I have done is I have a class called bulk management db context which is you know inheriting from entity framework db context object of course this guy lives inside data the entity right and then since I'm using my one default I'm not using default connection string so I'm basically passing the hard-coded connection string name into the base constructor of DB context and then exposing all my um, all my object as a property DB set properties that is what I have here but if you because you know when you create this AS3.NET MDC application as a default template by default they they also have uh, if you go into the account view model I think they have a, they already have uh, some sort of DB context somewhere they have a this context already created identity models see right here they have they, but this is this is what I'm what I'm talking about they already have an application DB context and I have my new context of bulk management DB context that's what this management console is saying hey you have a two context tell me which one you want to migrate into the back end so to this I have I can say uh, then I have to say the context type context type uh, of course, you know that I can pass the whole uh, name space and all the way the class name. This is the my context right here. Okay, this is the one I want to enable the migration enable on this bulk management DV context. That's the command. Okay, now as you can see, the migration. Now the code first migration is enabled for this process. Now what I can do now is I'm going to say add. I want to issue another command called say add migration. And migration to my object. Um, bug management DB context. Let's copy this one. Go in here. So what it did basically at this point is created basically a bunch of these classes right here. So basically the, this uses this timestamp, time right now, and the name of the context. This is basically creates a class. You can actually see see the code that was, you know, uh, basically issued. Basically you can see the code that was, you know, basically created by this DB context. And of course, you know, at this point, it has not really uh, pushed those changes into the into the database. We can verify that. So, uh, if you do a refresh, I don't see a table. I don't see a database called you know whatever we put in our configuration, um, which said in our configuration. Let's look at here. The project bug management. We don't see that database created yet. It is because you know that we haven't issued the last command. We're going to say uh, update the database command, and then we're going to say uh, issue a barbose command. Barbose. Uh, what this one does, you can actually see the the command that was you know SQL create command, create alter whatever it needed to do to push the chain model changes into back in database. You can see in here. Okay, this is really good. As you can see right here, of course, you know it keeps tracks of the all the migration, all the changes that's happening to our migration, and then as you can see, you know it creates.